hello uh, welcome back to the lecture so we are actually discussing uh, how information can be transformed to knowledge so that is what our intention is in 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 this class and in our in our overall life as such we we don't want to just reproduce information but we want to become knowledgeable and wise persons so for that matter we need to understand how the how we can do that how we can uh, gather the information which is provided to us and make some uh, meaningful knowledge uh, which 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 gives some uh, that that knowledge which uh, leads to some growth in us and we are able to do something utilizing that knowledge and that uh, makes us a wiser person than before so in the last two lectures so the first lecture I uh, spent uh, on uh, trying to understand the inherent uh, capacities that are present within each of us which perhaps are dormant right now so we need to wake them up again and uh, Mm, we need to wake them up again so that uh, we can actually go ahead and uh, transform knowledge uh, transform information into knowledge so what are those capacities so those capacities are our inherent nature to wonder at things which which uh, uh, which we uh, so wonder at all the all the things that uh, we don't know about so we don't have an idea about how they how these things are working so so all these things uh, uh, lead to uh, the question within us so we want to understand them better so this nature of this inquisitive nature that is within us that needs to be brought up that that needs to be prominent that needs to be dominant in our character only then we will be able to uh, do something with the information that is presented to us only then instead of just studying the subject we will be able to learn the subject if we have that if we if we uh, if we uh, approach the subject from that mode of inquiry uh, and uh, from that from that uh, uh, nature of wondering on that subject so then they they will lead to uh, that that spark that that comes within the our brain cells and so our neurons will spark and we can say that it is the light that within us will shine and this light will shine on the information and transform it into knowledge so that is uh, what we need to uh, develop or redevelop within us and uh, from the teacher's perspective we saw that the work of the teacher is basically to uh, make the student aware of this inherent inner potential that they have that all of us have and and utilize that to drive them to utilize that inherent potential in, into uh, and 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 work with that potential to in their in their life in general and uh, to understand and be knowledgeable in the subject that they are learning they are studying so that is the work of that uh, work of the teacher so now in this particular lecture we, we will we will uh, understand how how information gets transformed to knowledge so uh, everything is presented as information but there is naturally we as as i already i think gave an example so whenever we see something we know what it is so but what we receive is basically information in form of lights in form of light so but we know what it is so there is a there, there is a, a, some uh, transformation that already happens naturally we don't need to get uh, so much trained with trained on that so we need to understand the process in which information gets transformed to knowledge so that we can 
uh, we can work with it we can be aware of that process and we can uh, we can uh, work with that process so that we we can do this we can we can we, uh, we can work with information and transform them to knowledge so let us let us go ahead and see what this particular lecture has to offer so we i start generally with this uh, uh, sets of pictures and i show them to the uh, students in my class and ask them what are these what are you seeing so the general uh, answer would be i see paintings so there are some other different answers also but most of them will say this that we are seeing paintings so of course these are paintings so there is nothing um, wrong in saying that these are paintings uh, of course these are paintings so uh, let us uh, now just uh, do something with these paintings and see if our uh, if our outlook to these paintings change or not so what we will do is just this what i have done i have clubbed or grouped the paintings together and just by doing that suddenly you can identify that these paintings which were arranged in a random manner so uh, in a disarranged fashion they were placed suddenly when they get arranged and grouped together they reveal more meaning than just being paintings what more meaning do they reveal like you see that the blue boxed paintings are the paint are, are paintings of human faces or maybe men with hat so i will just say they are human faces so let's go with that so um, they are human faces and um, in the in the uh, yellow box we see flowers in the green box we see chairs so suddenly what were paintings in general gets transformed and gets transformed to specific paintings specific objects so they are still paintings but now they have some more some specific attributes and we generally uh, wish to call them with that specific attribute rather than the general attribute of the of painting so we we would we would like to call them as human faces we would like to call them as flowers and chairs we forget somehow so we 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 know this but we generally overlook the idea that they are paintings still we overlook this fact and we stress upon the fact our mind does this our brain does this we stress upon the fact that they are flowers because they are they are more uh, relevant or uh, in one way we can say they are more relevant or more specific uh, information more specific knowledge about these grouped information that when you look at the flowers uh, the painting of the flowers you know that they are painting so that is one one knowledge however uh, you also know that these are flowers so that is another knowledge and we generally wish to uh, wish to uh, wish to gather the knowledge which is more specific about that particular object so that is our inherent nature our inherent nature is to understand a particular object by by uh, by understanding what is the specific attribute uh, by which this object is different from other objects so that is the inherent uh, nature of in us which wants to classify objects into groups and as i already i i discussed last uh, in last lecture so this is what this is actually uh, understanding the dharma of a particular object so that distinguishing character in a particular thing which which distinguishes it from all other things so here even if you see these two uh, pictures of the man in hat uh, or the or the faces 
you can say you can very well understand that they are different from each other and one can uh, try to figure out we, what is the difference so you you will be able to uh, point out to certain features which are present in one and not present in the other so uh, perhaps the the style of painting which is very different that you can understand in these two in these two uh, human faces uh, by the way these two are very famous and all of these are very famous paintings and uh, uh, i i would urge you to to know whose paintings are these so you can go back you can search in google about uh, impressionist paintings uh, painters so these are these are paintings in in the in the impressionist uh, form so you can you can very well then uh, reveal the information and uh, about these paintings and uh, and know uh, about the, that that style of painting so anyway so what i am trying to stress is that uh, about uh, un about the dharma or the distinguishing feature of each particular object so in even in these paintings so even though they are clubbed together these two pictures are very different from each other in some characteristic or the other and we can go on uh, like distinguishing uh, one object from the another from another in that manner so what happened actually so when we uh, when we had this uh, cluster of paintings we identified them as the unifying uh, attribute which is painting however when we, 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 we saw that we can also group them and once they are grouped we start identifying them with with the unified characteristic of their particular group and not the uh, not the characteristic of the entire population so we start identifying them as the we, with the characteristic of the subset not the total population so this is what we are doing we are trying to we we inherently had identified the dharma or the distinguishing feature of this particular subset of flowers of chairs of the human uh, faces so when we uh, identify that uh, subset uh, characteristic feature we generally go on telling that these obje these objects are uh, having this having that that characteristic feature so these objects here are flowers so we we call them flowers and we don't call them paintings anymore though we know though we understand that they are paintings but somewhere we automatically look above uh, that general nature of them being paintings and point to the specific nature of them being flowers so this is what happens within us inherently so our our nascent intelligence does this thing i will show that in a slide uh, in a bit further away so this is the nature of our intelligence which does this thing i don't know about um, non-human intelligence if they are doing this naturally or not but human intelligence does this very naturally so the nat the natural tendency of our intelligence is to group things together if is to identify the underlying distinguishing feature within each object that distinguishes it from all other objects so the identification of dharma is inherent in us and some of the people pursue that uh, spirit of inquiry and lead uh, and go ahead into the scientific uh, mode of inquiry and understand all the different objects out there and discover their uh, specific nature and uh, as well as the general their general nature as well as their specific nature so this is how the scientific mode of inquiry progresses uh, so now i will go ahead and try to focus on these particular pictures so we have already classified them as human faces so now when we have classified them as human faces 
yeah sorry yeah so now when we have classified them as human faces i now ask you the question so you are very certain they are human faces now i just ask you the question that the human faces that you know that you see around you do they look any any way similar to these faces which are which are drawn in these paintings no right you don't see human faces from where these sort of lines are coming up, coming out so as as in the left left face you don't see human faces where the their complexion is so much spotted like in the uh, in the right in the right face you don't see human faces like this but still you are very certain that what the artist have drawn and painted are human faces they are not any other thing in this world how does this happen so you see your brain has has played a trick on with you your mind has played a trick with you correct because your mind as you know you you are very certain that as, uh, when i point when i am pointing out now you are very certain that these do not re do not resemble any of the human faces we see around us but still when this information in this painting was presented to you you gathered the knowledge that they are human faces your mind gathered the knowledge that they are human faces so where is the where is the is there a problem or if, if there is a problem where is the problem so the thing is that there really is not a problem this is only uh, uh, there is another uh, feature of uh, uh, of information which is representation of information so information is represented in many different ways however all of them can uh, can deliver the same knowledge like here the left one is also a face right one is also a face they are represented in different manners the style of painting in the left one is very different from the style of painting in the right one however they are delivering the same knowledge that they are human faces this is the underlying knowledge this is the underlying knowledge that we are capturing from the information though the information is presented in in uh, widely different manner so from this we can understand that information the the representations of information can be very different though all of them could lead to one underlying truth one underlying understanding one underlying knowledge and we our brains are capable of extracting that underlying knowledge this is a feature of the human brain i am not sure of, of, about other hum, about other uh, animal brains but this is a feature of human brains that they are able to extract the underlying knowledge which is common to all the different representations of information i am trying to use words as precise as possible so please pay attention to the words because that is how i try to deliver my lecture so i don't uh, i i don't use words here and there i try to be as precise as possible so what i what what i said is is pay attention to that so i am saying that we are our brains are able to extract the underlying knowledge from different representations of information so now i will show you some more different information and different representations of information so these are different other uh, repre other uh, representations of the information 
and the underlying knowledge is the same that they are human faces however here uh, i have shown you more like human faces so you may say that yeah those uh, previous representations were crude and these are more real so um, uh, they are cruder uh, uh, representations there are more perfect representations so representations the levels of representations might be different however the underlying knowledge is the same so as long as the knowledge is transmitted the representation is working we can say the representation is fine so i am trying to present something to you so i will put forward a, a set of information if you are getting the knowledge that i want to deliver to you with that set of information my job is done your job is done so it uh, it doesn't matter what is that information how it how it is represented it only matters whether i was able to convey the knowledge to you that is all it matters so in this way if you look around this world we have we have systems of representations so uh, large and wide and varied what are these systems of representation the language the human language so you, that is one example only one example so many systems of representation however if we know that system of representation if this if two person knows the system of representation the knowledge can get transferred from one person to another using that system of representation so in this lecture we are more focused on representation of information we are trying to understand that there are various possible representations of information and uh, all of them can are uh, are are equally compatible uh, or e equally uh, um, e equally uh, competent equally competent to deliver the same knowledge from one uh, from one person to another now uh, deliver the same knowledge to any person okay so here in this particular uh, slide what um, i am showing is some other dif other representations of the same knowledge and you can say yeah, now when we have so many representations one can say uh, well uh, this representation is better than the other so this sort of comparison could be made could be made that comparison could be made however all the representations work very fine when it is only concerned about transmitting the knowledge that what we are seeing are human faces so if we are limiting our knowledge only to this then all these representations are fine or works well enough now you can you can very well uh, have have an example where a uh, yeah, like nowadays modern art and abstract art uh, is in rage so you can uh, say that there is an abstract art i saw I, and i didn't understand what it is and it was written in at the side that it is a human face <laughs> okay so this sort of a situation can very well happen uh, so there what happens so the what is some idea did come to the painter and uh, he represented it so he the idea was a human face perhaps for to him however the way he represented that idea was not conveyed to the viewers or perhaps there are, there is a set of viewers who would understand i don't know but normally people don't really understand the uh, what what they are trying to say in, in in with their modern and abstract art so that is another case so there that that representation does not serve a purpose that only serves a purpose of expression so that that artist did find an expression however that expression did not become a meaningful representation of the same knowledge so he expressed some some idea however that expression did not become a, a suitable representation a meaningful representation to uh, to deliver that idea to another person so this can also happen so we need to be careful that we represent information in a certain way so that whatever 
we are trying to whatever idea or whatever knowledge we are we we wish to transmit to the other person goes in a in a proper manner okay so we need to be, be careful how we are expressing ourselves how we are representing the information and just it came to my mind that uh, and sometimes we see question uh, answer papers answer sheets so so many things scribbled around here and there perhaps they are all right so so what what, what happens so sometimes what happens i am un unable to uh, read the answer and this happens to all all other teachers so the student has uh, represented the answer in such a, um, a cumbersome and manner that it it does not uh, it does not transmit the underlying uh, knowledge to the to the to me to the examiner and we sometimes uh, try hard a bit some uh, so the first attempt we make a make some attempt to read through the information read through the representation but then we fail and we classify it as some modern art and abstract art and uh, we say that uh, we don't give any marks suppose then the student will come running when we show the question paper and try to make us understand uh, how he had done and these are all the steps are correct and so and so so maybe all the steps are correct but how did you represent that information you try to re try to uh, give some thought in this so you are trying to make someone else understand some idea that you have if you are unable to express yourself properly if you are unable to represent that idea properly how how will that other person understand it so in this the use of a common representation within some limits of being here and there would work but if you are very far away if you had strayed so far away that it does not resemble anything at all to the examiner then there is a problem and in this case you have a uh, an option to come running to the examiner and uh, asking them or uh, trying to make them understand how you have uh, done the uh, how we have uh, portrayed the idea however this would not be the case in in your uh, general life it would not be the case like that you would have to send your expressions to other people and they would have to um, only see that expression and uh, obtain the knowledge from there so if you are not if you would not be able to do that in those cases you, you your ideas even if even if though they are correct or they are proper they would not they would fail to impact the other person so you should you should focus more on how you are representing information this is very important in your life in the small subjects it it it, it is also important because it it will save a lot of time for the examiner as well as uh, the student and in your life even 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 though like you can in this in this uh, small purview of subjects you can correct yourself however that option to correct yourself will not be given in the broader aspect of life you have to be very cautious very conscious of how you are representing how you are expressing your ideas how you are expressing your knowledge so that was a bit long lecture on that uh, uh, so what we are trying to do here so we we see here a lot of faces now i will ask you something which will suddenly shift suddenly like turmoil the, this entire idea that we were looking at faces are these human faces of course they are human faces so that is what we had now concluded so yeah we concluded that uh, these are representations of human faces so we can stick with that idea so my question is that are these representations of human faces you say yes they are representations of human faces this is what we 
our good opponent we concluded that these are representations of human faces so so why this question is coming now so what i what am i trying to trying to point out in this what am i what i am trying to point out is this that these are basically only light coming to your eyes isn't it so these are basically light coming to your eyes at the very ground level of information these are just light coming to your eyes and your brain has been able to understand the form and shape of these lights and with that understanding that is one level so the first level is only the light is coming the most basic or the most ground level of information you may also say they are the they are the bit level of information so the bit level of information is when we are talking about computers so in our case also correspondingly we may term that a bit level of information that is coming to us then our brain understands the shape color forms and that understanding is another level however those forms and shapes are representing human faces that is another level of understanding so you see you already had crossed two or three levels of understanding in order to gather the knowledge that these uh, representations of information convey the knowledge of being human faces so already you have you have uh, moved up two or three layers and understood the information isn't it isn't it amazing isn't it amazing how this is working so when you when you really understand it when you when you really become aware of it this is immensely uh, amazing and wondrous suppose our brains did not have any capability to uh, give uh, forms and shapes to this uh, light which is coming to us would we be any any way capable of doing anything no suppose we uh, we get limited to the forms and shapes and we don't understand what these are will we be able, able to do anything no so all that ability that our brain has that is enabling us to perform in our lives we are trying to understand those stratas of how information is getting transformed to knowledge so this is a learning and this is called transcendental learning so the information is transcended so whatever the bit level of information is coming to us or whatever information is coming to us we transcend that information and go to a learning go to a knowledge so all the intelligence this is the inherent nature purest nature of intelligence that it is able to ex extract transcendental knowledge from any presented information it is able to extract transcendental knowledge from any presented information so the information does not remain information as such it goes and rises above information to some level of knowledge and if you understand more and more that level of knowledge will also increase further and further however the information is always transcended and gets reason to a level of knowledge how is it done it is done through identification and correlation of form so normally whatever information we are presented with we classify it so that classification is basically the identification 
and how we classify it we classify it with regards to some attributes so there's attributes we can call as forms so that classification with respect to some attributes of the information so any information we ha will have attributes and based on attributes that information can be classified and when we do that suddenly we get some knowledge out of that information and this identification and this uh, this uh, artificial classification uh, and uh, uh, with based on the form based on the attributes is done automatically by any intelligence this is done automatically this is the inherent nature of intelligence that is what i am trying to stress why i am saying this is the inherent nature of intelligence just look at a child a child does not need to be taught of uh, in order to uh, classify or categorize shapes and colors you just present them with a bunch of uh, shapes and different colors he will classify it give give it some time give it some time it it will classify it it will classify the triangles uh, you know, make sets of triangles make sets of different colors different shapes and sizes naturally this is a natural capability within all of us it naturally identifies forms and patterns this is the nature of intelligence so the more you are able to categorize information by means of its attributes the more intelligent you are we can say like that also the more you are intelligent the more you will be able to categorize the information in terms of its attributes and when you do that the more knowledge the more transcendental knowledge you can extract from that information that is what is intelligence we say a person is intelligent when he is able to do that when he is able to extract transcendental knowledge from presented information the better one can do it the more intelligent we term that person however what i want to stress is uh, not going into the into more and more or less i just want to stress that this feature is available from the very beginning of our lives from our very birth this feature is given to us and then our own job would have been to either develop hone this feature or just make it lay dormant within us and not use it it is our own choice so my call to you is to develop this hone this skill whatever you see try to categorize based on its attributes this is a practice you can do that if you practice this whatever you see you see language you see uh, you see scripts you see uh, cars you see uh, films you see pictures whatever you see you try to uh, try to gather a lot of different objects in that population and you try to categorize them based on some attributes and that attributes will also you will figure out on your own when you see a lot of when you suppose uh, uh, i am uh, i um, had been a film buff so nowadays i don't really see uh, get some get so much time to watch movies but um, there was a time when i used to see a lot of movies so i had a lot of vast population of movies which i uh, saw from uh, trash movies to very uh, classic movies and i could understand so by 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 getting a lot of training data lot of lots and lots of training data the brain is automatically able to extract attributes extract different features and classify based on those features and attributes and get and get the categories of movies i could very easily understand the categories of movies based on some uh, based on features and attributes 
which normally other people will not understand of course one understand which is an animation movie and which is a live action movie people understand what is a thriller movie and what is a romantic movie however even within the romantic movies or within the thriller movies there are more underlying attributes so when one spends time with a particular thing he develops the cap the capability of understanding those things identifying the hidden or inner attributes within those things and is able to classify categorize further and further distinguish these objects further and further based on dharma based on their distinctive cat distinctive features so that that is the reason people will tell you to practice 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 the more you practice something the bigger the training data you receive and the bigger the training data you receive the better you are able to extract these hidden features from them and able to categorize them into different subsets and that reveals knowledge that gives you knowledge the knowledge is automatically extracted so from the information you, you gather the transcendental knowledge so that is the idea behind practicing invest time into something you keep on doing that again and again you spend time with that again and again you will develop this uh, your your intelligence is bound to be you bound to get sharper and sharper and sharper at least in that particular um, uh, field of knowledge for my case it uh, became the movies at some point of time you can you perhaps one is uh, interested in painting it, it paints a lot sees a lot of painting so someone is uh, keen in photography uh, sees a lot of photography takes a lot of photographs so those in those fields they will they they will be more intelligent they will be able to see hidden things inner inner features inner attributes like the photographers will say a lot lot of things about aperture uh, so f number whatever else and all so i don't know so much about those things but those are those are features which distinguish one photograph from another or one set of photographs from another and the photographer has the intelligence to understand that one who is not a photographer will not have the intelligence to understand that so that is what i am trying to stress that this intelligence the nature of intelligence is this and where you apply it in which you spend more time the intelligence will naturally be able to uh, able to able to give you more knowledge extract more knowledge from that field of study so if you spend more time on digital electronics you will become more intelligent and more knowledgeable in there in that even though uh, maybe at the very beginning you will not like the subject but you spend time that is what i am saying in anything you spend time in any other subject not just digital electronics in in any subject if you give time if you spend time if you look at the same thing again and again and again it will reveal you something it will reveal something you just need to be aware that your intelligence is at work so if you are aware of it you are, you will you will you will see that your intelligence will be able to work in a faster manner in in a more quick manner it will be able to do it so this is what i wanted to stress here and let us just go further so let us see what uh, i have said here yeah so we are we are talking about shapes so from now uh, from now on uh, moving ahead i will be going a bit towards mathematics actually so uh, here what the child has was able to do the child was able to uh, categorize based on shapes and colors so i am trying to focus on shapes now what are shapes shapes are abstract objects having no physical existence of their own there is only and only a mathematical idea of shape 
and it can be defined through math. This abstract concept is manifested through physical objects. There is a lot of different words, new words coming up. So let us understand this, uh, what I am trying to say here. So you think about an issue. Suppose you think about a rectangle. So when I, when I would ask you, can you show me a rectangle? If I ask you, can you show me a rectangle? So I do this in the class. Please show me a rectangle. So they will maybe uh, they they will show you show me the copy or they will they will show the duster, or they will show the uh, rectangular screen. So when they will do that, I will say you are showing me a screen. You are showing me a duster. You are showing me a copy. Where, where is the rectangle? Show me the rectangle. The rectangle cannot be shown. The rectangle is an idea. The circle is an idea. A point is an idea. A line is an idea. Every shape is an idea, is a mathematical idea. Is an idea. Okay. Mathematical is, comes later on. Is an idea. So we have an idea of a straight line. If we, if we, uh, and with the help of the line, and then we have an idea of line segments, then combination of these line segments give us an idea of triangle and other different shapes. However, this is only an idea. If we want, if we, if we ask someone to show me that shape, to show me a triangle, they would start finding out objects around themselves. They will not look for the triangle or they will not be able to show me the triangle unless they show me an object which somehow resembles the triangle in some manner. So that idea of triangle is resembled, is manifested through certain physical objects. The idea of rectangle is manifested through the projector screen through the uh, duster or through the, uh, uh, through the uh, uh, book or copy. But they are not rectangle as such. They are some physical object and that physical object has that attribute of a rectangle in some way. Not, they don't have that attribute uh, uh, the precise attribute. So you can't say that my copy is exactly rectangular. Exactly rectangular, there is nothing exactly rectangular. There is nothing exactly a circle. There is nothing exactly a rectangle. There is nothing exactly a point. You can't specify that exact, exact shape. You can't, you can't show us an exact shape. The exact shape does not exist in this world. In this observable world. So whatever you can observe in that, that exact shape you will not be able to observe. However, we have a clear idea of what that exact shape is. We have a clear idea of what a triangle is, a rectangle is, a point is, a circle is, a line segment is. We have an exact idea of it. So the so so where is this exact idea lying, existing? It is not existing in this observable world. It is ex it is existing in an abstract uh, level of existence. It is having it is it is there in an ex abstract level of existence, and we can use mathematics as a tool to describe those abstract, those shapes lying in that abstract level of existence. Maths as such is an abstraction. Maths is a tool. You can't show me math. Right. Maths is a tool. We know, we all know math, but you can't show me math. So maths is also uh, having an abstract existence of its own. And 
it is able to represent that shape and all those things which are which are residing in that abstract level of existence so with with the help of mathematics we can very definitely and very precisely uh, point out to a particular shape describe a particular shape very precisely using uh, um, using art theta we can uh, describe a circle so in the in these manners uh, so you, you we can describe very precise shapes and uh, and other uh, shapes using some mathematical symbols some mathematical idea some mathematical knowledge so what is happening here so what i am trying to stress is that information exists in different levels one is in, in the observable world and another is in the abstract level of existence it is un, it is unobserved though existing so they, so you have to you have to stretch a bit of your imagination here it is unobserved though it is existing so naturally so normally uh, we try to say that uh, whatever we can observe that is the only truth but it is not so whatever we cannot observe can also be a truth so mathematics is certainly something like that shapes and shapes of object forms etc these are abstract features these are manifested through the physical objects however not manifested in perfection they are never manifested in perfection though uh, though the perfect idea of those attributes are there in our mind we can describe them perfectly using mathematics so just ponder on this fact just ponder on this fact because uh, nowadays uh, like uh, people or so called so called scientific minded people will tell you that whatever you cannot observe is not a fact is not a truth but it is entirely wrong science depends on mathematics and mathematics cannot be observed it is only an idea and it is a genuine and uh, in infallible idea so with the help of mathematics if we are able to prove something that is truth and that truth exists however it does not exist in the observable world it is only manifested in the observable world in some level of perfection may not be 100% perfection in some level of perfection it is manifested and we are trying to understand we are trying to ab uh, trying to uh, abstractize if i may use this word abstractize the physical objects in, in such a way that we can that this abstract thing and the physical thing uh, and the observable thing will be exactly the same but that is that has not been reached and perhaps that is not possible perhaps that is not possible so so just stay on this idea for a bit moment yeah so what we are talking is we are talking about is the abstraction and the physical object and the observable universe so what we see what we discover is that this physical manifestation so if we if we say so now we are suddenly confronted with two different worlds of existence one is the observable world and another is this abstract world and the observable world is truth we see it 
all around us. The abstract world is also true because we know mass is there, which is a truth. So, what happens? So there is a correlation between these two. So, what we what we understood that the abstract concept is manifested through the physical objects. However, we also understood that this such physical manifestation inevitably corrupts the abstraction it represents. It is not able to represent that abstraction in full perfection. So, there is a corruption. There is a corruption in the manifestation of this of the abstraction. So, that is what I want to stress here. And uh, I'll just I'll just go a bit away from this subject and uh, tell you something. Uh, maybe you will you will not uh, understand this readily, but just keep it as an information. May not it it may not uh, transcend into any knowledge at this time. Just keep it as an information, and if possible, come back and look at it. Look at it. Look at this information again and again. So what I I, I am saying here is that. The abstract concept is manifested to, through physical objects and such physical manifestation inevitably corrupts the abstraction it represents. If you study at some point of your time, if you go, go about studying uh, how, uh, the, how, uh, how the Vedic literature has represented God, you will realize that it is nothing but an abstract existence, an abstract level of uh, truth. God is termed as the source of all that it is, of all that there is, and that source, that that in that that level will never be able to uh, will will never be able to capture that abstraction that is a perfect level of existence the most perfect thing is god that is the that is how god has been defined in vedic literature and everything that we see around us is a manifestation of that God. So, if we relate the same concept, we will see, we will readily understand that whatever we are trying to call God resides in an abstract existence. It is there, it is existing, there, there is existence of God as per Vedic literature. So, there is existence of God. However, we will not be able to show God in this observed world. We will only be able to show manifestations of God in this observable world. And when we are trying to show the manifestations, inevitably they get corrupted. Because this abstract concept, when manifested through physical objects, inevitably has some corruption in it. So, the physical manifestation inevitably corrupts the abstraction it, it represents. What I mean by corrupt here is that this observed world, this observable world is not able to manifest the same idea which is residing in the abstract world, abstract level of existence in perfection. So, we have, so Vedic literature has defined God as in some, in a in a level of perfection which is unachievable. So, if you are able to achieve that level of perfection, God is beyond that level of perfection, more perfect than that. So, they have just extremized the concept of God to some 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 idea which is which will never be one will never be able to achieve. However, we can only try to uh, we can only try to make ourselves or make things in this observable world 
go near and near and near and near to that level of abstraction. So that is what we we can try to achieve, and that is what we perhaps we should able to, should uh, try to achieve. We we should uh, try to go towards that towards uh, manifesting our own selves in the light of the concept of God. In the light of God, we should try to manifest ourselves. So God is kept like a reference frame which we will never be able to achieve but we should always strive towards that. We should always strive towards that. So anyway, here I will end the discussion about the uh, representation of God in Vedic, Vedic literature. Perhaps you will go towards uh, this sort of uh, learning some point in your life and this might be helpful this uh, sort this information i just passed on to you might reveal some knowledge later on in your life so where i will go from here is this understanding now so we understood that the abstract level abstract knowledge is uh, manifested in the observable world so, however, it is not just understanding the physical objects through abstract re representation and uh, abstract information representations. Transcendental learning, the, the thing that we are talking about, transcendental knowledge, knowledge extracted from information. It is not just understanding physical objects through abstract representations. It is also understanding the non-physical abstract concepts through the physical objects or other information. It works both ways. So the transcendental learning, so you can readily understand this. From where did we get the idea of circles and rectangles and uh, triangles? By looking at objects, by looking at physical objects. However, Mm, so by looking at only by looking at physical objects we got got the i got these abstract ideas so you form these abstract entities these abstract concepts only by looking at physical objects observable objects however that is also a knowledge so here the physical objects or the observed world is the information and the knowledge is the abstract concepts. It can work the other way around where you can gain some knowledge about physical objects by studying the abstract concepts, by studying the abstract, uh, abstract information, the circles and the triangles, they are abstract information. You study them and you immediately gain some understanding about certain physical objects as well. So only when we learn uh, about a circle, we will get to understand how a wheel will behave. Though the wheel does not manifest the circle in imperfection, even then we will understand how the wheel will behave. And by observing wheels, we will we would be able to uh, gather this abstract idea of a circle. So it works both ways. It works both ways. The transcendental learning works both ways. So this is just an example uh, which uh, I, will, I will just show to emphasize on this phenomenon of transcendental learning. So this is observation. In the left side the apple is falling from the tree. This is physical observation. What is the abstraction that Isaac Newton could derive from this is f equals to ma. f equals to ma is the abstraction that Isaac Newton derived from looking from observation of this particular phenomenon happening in the observable world. And when this abstraction is reached, one can study this abstraction and understand that many other different physical uh, uh, manifestations of this abstraction is going on in this world, in this observable world. Other different physical manifestation of this abstract 
uh, of this abstraction of f equals to m a is going on in this in this observable world like the car moving or whatever is moving whatever is in motion could be described by this law of motion which is an abs which resides in that in the abstract level of existence this is the power of abstraction so why do we need to uh, uh, learn about abstract uh, mathematics mathematics is an abstract thing and uh, many of us uh, might have uh, a fear of mathematics at some uh, point in their life i used to have it in some point of my uh, my life but it is important we need to understand how what is the beauty behind this abstraction so one abstraction done from only one particular observable phenomenon now is able to uh, describe so many other different observable phenomena happening in this world so this is the power of abstraction anything you abstractize that abstraction will immediately reveal uh, will be immediately be able to describe other different things however it might not be able to describe all other different things so the universe is also in motion however f equals to ma is unable to describe the motion of the universe so there is also a limitation of abstraction so you have you have made some abstraction from a particular observable phenomenon that same abstraction is able to describe a lot of other different phenomena great however since the abstraction is a perfect uh, or a, so uh, that that same abstraction will not be able to describe so many other phenomena in this world so that is the limitation of abstraction is also there so one abstraction may be only applicable to describe a certain set of observable phenomena however not not all the observable phenomena because there of course is a is a is a is a difference between what is what is physical manifestation and what is the abstract idea there is a difference correct so the abstract idea is able to describe certain physical manifestations and observations though not all of the physical manifestations and observations so when this happens there comes levels of abstraction so some other person like here in this case einstein was able to describe the uh, he, he, he proposed the general theory of relativity and special theory of relativity and describe the motion of the universe and this is the abstraction that he proposed which is e equals to mc square so with this abstraction so we uh, so with this abstraction all different motion is uh, is being is able to be uh, to understand we we are able to understand all different types of motion so we can rise we can rise we can raise the level of and level of abstraction so when so this is like going up the level of level of abstraction so there are levels of abstraction so when whenever we see that some abstraction is getting limited we try to find out we try to figure out is there a higher level of abstraction where we can go and it can describe a lot more different physical uh, phenomena observable phenomena so this is how scientific progress is also made scientific progress is nothing but figuring out these levels of abstraction levels of abstraction are nothing but the attributes features of a particular problem of a particular observation 
so we are trying to gather extract more and more features and trying to understand what is that general feature which is describing which can describe all the different things so this is where this is the direction in which science is progressing that trying to find out the unified law uh, so I, I i don't know exactly the term i am forgetting that they are trying to find out the one unified law of existence so that would be the uh, the highest level of abstraction that they are trying to reach in vedic literature the highest level of abstraction has already has already been proposed and as god and in in modern scientific endeavor we are trying to reach towards the highest level of level of abstraction through the use of mathematics in vedic literature it was a philosophical idea now we are trying to reach uh, the similar concept the highest level of abstraction through a through use of maths so what we what we understood in this lecture uh, which has become a bit longer than i expect and than i expected however what we understood is this is uh, compiled in this particular slide so in the left you can see so many different physical objects observed uh, observed objects so and uh, in the right you can see mathematics so mathematics is a perfect abstraction of the observable world and the observable world is an imperfect manifestation of the mathematical world mathematical concepts the observed world the the uh, the observed world the mathematics is a perfect abstraction of the observed world and the observed world is an imperfect manifestation of the mathematical ideas mathematical concepts this you need to keep in mind because as engineers as people in the scientific domain you are working with both of these and you need to understand what is separating these two we need to understand the distinction between maths and the object that it describes this must be very clear in your mind so we are working with the physical manifestation of mathematics as engineers we have to work with objects we are working with physical manifestations of mathematics however we need to understand the mathematics in order to work with it without understanding the mathematics we will not be able to work with the physical objects we may work with one physical object but that same uh, uh, same work may not be able to uh, in if we are presented with another object we, we might not be able to work with it unless we know the underlying mathematics which is common to both these objects or a set of objects we will not be able to work with those set of objects we will only try to in trial and error process we will try to work with individual objects but that is not a smart way the smart way is to understand the abstract uh, level of uh, and the, the abstraction of these objects and gain an understanding of that abstraction and then work with that abstraction within all those objects and it will, it will be guaranteed to work in some level of with some level of imperfection of course but it will work there will no there will not be a trial and error process so in order to understand a set of things we we try to understand that that defining feature that unifying feature of those set of things and the only way we can understand that that unifying feature is through the 
mathematical representation of that feature that is how we can understand that is how we understand in science and engineering use using the mathematics using the tool of mathematics using the abstraction of mathematics so that's why mathematics is important when in this course also you will understand how the maths is working though we are working with physical objects and devices what is working behind that is the mathematics mathematics is getting manifested through the electronics and the devices with which we will be working so we are nearing the end of the lecture so now i just represent uh, you with this particular slide and what is the information you are getting from this slide so we have talked a lot about information abstraction all these things so now what is the information and the knowledge that you are receiving from here so you can see there is a blue straight vertical line line segment probably and when i ask the class about it what they are saying so after all this lecture they will not try to answer anything in fear that they may be wrong <laughs> because they understand what what they understand they understand inherently that what knowledge they are gathering from this information someone else may gather a different knowledge from this information so what he would say might not match with another person and we have an inherent fear which is really not uh, 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 which really is unfounded to speak our minds so if we speak our own mind someone of us might see this as i someone might, might see this as l someone might might see this as one someone might see this as a line segment someone might see this as a blue color only or a blue pillar maybe so all this uh, all these things can be uh, can be received as knowledge as a transcended knowledge from this presented information however when i put another information here another object at the side of the first object then suddenly we start thinking that the first object the second object looks more like one so maybe the first object is also one and if i put a third object which is very definitely looking like one so now we all will start supposing that all the three objects are one so they are numbers so when we are thinking of numbers that uh, straight vertical line is nothing but one so now when we remove this uh, these two objects which i added later which which resembles more like one so with that help we have uh, we have come to the conclusion that the first object is also one so now when we remove this say two second objects and place a circle like this we will suppose the first thing that will come to our mind is that this is a zero because the other object sitting with it is one so we were confused about the first object remember this we were confused about the first object what it represents but once we we got a clarification or uh, in our minds we established yes this is one so now a new object which now is sitting with it immediately gets an identification of being in the same set of objects so when that was a number so this object also becomes a number so it was one and this one becomes zero we write another one so this is one zero one now what happened now suddenly things become a bit dicey what what exactly had happened so 101 it was fine so did sir write this one uh, a bit uh, inclined manner 
so it, it, it is like one but it is not a straight vertical line it is a bit inclined so maybe one has written this uh, and uh, not placed this very well so we may still suppose that this is 1011 1, 1, or we might remain confused about it what exactly it represents now i suddenly change it to v and when we suddenly change this to v we have a different understanding we we get a different transcended knowledge from this represent from this representation of information suddenly they become alphabets from numbers this is a sudden transformation that happens so suddenly the one the o uh, the one and the zero that we were thinking were one and zero suddenly becomes i and o suddenly becomes i and o because i have introduced a v in between so what is happening here that is what i want to point out to you so the transcendental knowledge so we are receiving transcendental knowledge so the information is presented before we were extracting that uh, the knowledge that they are numbers now suddenly we extracting the knowledge that they are alphabets so this transcendental learning depends largely on the context or the system in which the abstract abstract information is presented in the context so when the context got changed suddenly the learning got changed so the context is basically the system in which the abstract representation is presented so we know both the systems of numbers and alphabets that's why we could shift our transcendental knowledge suppose someone who does not know english but knows the english numbers roman numbers they know however they don't know the english alphabets so for them this would this particular representation would hold no meaning the previous representation would hold meaning 101 they could identify but this one suddenly what has happened 10 what is this in between they would not know and again a one so they will have a incomplete understanding of what is being represented because they they are not familiar with this system of representation so we need to be familiar with the system of representation in order that we can extract the knowledge from it we can extract the desired knowledge from it or intended knowledge from it so the the representation intends to give some knowledge to to disseminate disseminate some knowledge in order to extract in order to receive that knowledge we must be familiar with that system like i told uh, told earlier the modern art artist what what he represents we are not able to grasp because we are not trained in that representation if someone of us is trained in that representation that person will be able to grasp the idea but normally we are not so normally modern art is something that baffles us we are not able to get what they are trying to represent what i also want to stress here is that the information cannot be freed from the context in order to interpret it intelligently so if you want to extract the desired knowledge out of it you have to understand the system in which the information is represented so the information cannot be freed from that system if the system changes the same information will lead to different understanding so the information gets coupled with the representation together they come to us together that they, they come to us and we have to know the system in which the information is represented in order to extract the knowledge from it so we will be dealing with systems actually systems of representation very soon that's why i wanted to stress with stress on this fact so the same information will be represented in different systems and the meaning will change the transcended knowledge will change 
that is what will happen as we as we will dive into the course however this is a phenomenon that is natural that is that is a, that is a truth it is a true phenomenon and this happens uh, and this is how it happens and i wanted you to be aware of it in the general per view of life in the general per view of life also this is how it happens so we say something yeah we can give this example we say something and we had in the back of our mind we had a context and regarding which we we speak something suppose someone who does not know the context listens to this that particular uh, sentence and he understands it wrongly he has he has every right to understand it wrongly because he does not know the context that person does not know the context in which you said this sentence if somehow if he he is also knowing the context he will immediately grasp it this happens a lot of time between friends so sometimes what happens maybe uh, in a group of friends one friend was uh, absent for some time and the other friends had some discussion about something and in the next uh, meeting this new this friend joined and they started speaking about something uh, that happened in the earlier uh, gatherings and this friend who was absent there would not be able to catch anything what they are trying to uh, mean why they are laughing uh, what they are enjoying about so they uh, this person will not get anything of that though he understands the language pretty well they are using the same language however that information is not giving him the knowledge giving this new this person the knowledge that the other persons other other friends are discussing about and he is not able to extract that knowledge he is not able to participate in the in that in, in that discussion that happens so this is the last slide of the presentation and i just uh, think that uh, i i always convey this message to my students and i end this uh, presentation with this word and this is a very important word and we all understand so if you if you know english you know what this word means and we all understand what this is love is the most important thing in this world for each one of us we all wish to be loved we all desire love and each one of us not just human beings but every animal you see around you they just wish that they are loved so this is an inherent inherent nature within us this love this desire to be loved and however what i want to stress is that love is existing at the highest level of abstraction possible which is which is proposed by the vedic literature by the vedic uh, uh, age sages as god god is the ultimate representation of love and everything which came out of god which is this world and this manifest physical manifestations are manifestations of love this is how the ancient sages had seen this existence and if we can also see this existence in that way it will immediately give a revolution in us it will immediately change our point of view our outlook to this world maybe not just in a day it, it may not be sudden but if you hang on to this realization that everything is made out of love then what will happen is you will try to find out that love 
distinctly different thing that we observe in this world. So you try to find out that love within you first. And that is very easy to discover. We all have the capacity to love that is inherent within us. However, by some in uh, by some uh, degree of uh, corruption, so that love is manifested, of course, in, in, in some degree of corruption. So, if we can, uh, so in that degree of corruption, what happens? It is this, this capacity to love that is within us gets shrouded by some veil and we are unable to experience it. We are unable to recognize it. And when that happens, we only desire love from others, not remembering or not realizing that we have an infinite capacity to love, to give love. So we already we are repositories of love and we can give out love to others. If everyone starts demanding, who will give? So as per the laws of economy, the market will fail. Everyone starts demanding love, there is no one to give love. So start being a generator. Start, start to realize that you have that capacity to give out love. You already have that capacity to give out love. You have done this and you can do this all the while and it does not need, it does not need any external factor. It does not need anything to be like anything. So any, any conditions does not need to be satisfied by anyone or anything in order for you to be a loving person. Be a generator of love. You are students of electrical engineering, I will give you an example. The generators which are running in the, uh, in the generating stations, they does not bother what is the load getting connected to them. Their work is just to generate and generate and generate. Generate and generate the electricity energy. You can also be a generator of love. Don't restrict yourself depending on the, on the person who is receiving the love. The generator does not, does not distinguish between a capacitive load or a resistive load, between a fan or a, a treadmill or, or something else or just a power phone or just a uh, phone battery charging. It may be a small load, it may, may be an insignificant load, it may be a very large load. The generator does not care because it knows that it can generate, it can always generate. So each one of us have that inherent capacity within us. It is only veiled because when the abstraction is manifested, it gets corrupted. That is the natural thing. However, when if we understand that this corruption, we can remove this corruption. When we understand that we are manifestations of, a, of something higher, of something greater and only we have been and, and, and because of the manifestation that corruption has happened we are unable to realize that that great potential in us so when we understand it from this perspective there is every chance that we will be able to remove that corruption remove that veil and realize our hidden potential realize our inherent inner potential, our true potential. With love everything happens. With love everything can be created. Every creation has a foundation of love. If you don't love something, you won't do that thing. That is your inherent nature. You may be forced to do that thing, that is another case, but on your own, you will not do that if you don't love it.
if you don't love doing that. So if you believe in God, you would understand that God, if he has created, if, if God has created this existence, he must have put a lot of love behind it. Otherwise, it could not be created. That is the inherent nature of creation. Creation happens because of love. So that love is put in, put behind this creation and each one of us, each, everything in this world has that, has, has that abstract, abstraction of love within them in some subtle level, in some subtle sense. And I urge you to discover that love within you. Only with love you will be able to, uh, yeah, yeah. only with love you will, you will receive the strength to do something, to create something and to, to, to do something meaningful, create something mean, meaningful so that it will serve others. You don't need to, uh, need to believe in God for that. That love is already within you. You have experienced that love. But you don't intentionally experience it consistently. But you can do that. And I urge you to do that. This world needs love. And you can be generators of love. And don't distinguish between loads. Don't distinguish who is between who is receiving your love. Let the loads bother about how much energy they will receive. The generator does not bother. The loads will receive their, their only that much of energy that they need. The phone battery chargers need less energy. The, uh, um, the meals which are running, the industries which are running require more energy. So whoever needs how much energy they will, they will uh, receive that amount of energy. The generator does not need to bother, you don't need to bother. Your work is only to give out, give out this love, give out this love which is your inherent inner potential. So with that note, I will end this lecture.